Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today we're going to discuss one of the most anticipated features in Microsoft Teams in a while, and that's breakout rooms. So let's dive right into how they work. Breakout rooms are a way to separate the participants in a meeting into mini meetings, either randomly or by organizing them yourself. They're especially useful in online classes, corporate events, board meetings with committee breakouts, and organizational retreats with brainstorming breakouts. The breakout rooms feature is one of the highest voted feature requests for Microsoft Teams as seen in this user voice request. Incidentally, if you're not familiar with user voice and you want to make feature requests known, Make sure to vote for ones you think are important at microsoftteams.uservoice.com. Microsoft pays close attention to this site when determining which features to prioritize. I can actually attest from personal experience working with them. Breakout rooms turn out to be reasonably simple to set up and manage, so let's cover some of the bigger features built into them and especially what they can't do yet. I'll be covering mostly demos for the rest of this video and fair warning that most of what you see is in preview at the time of posting. Something I say or show here may not look or act the same when you're watching, but likely the big picture concept remains. So if you're not seeing the right button in the right place, just look around a little, you'll probably find it. Another big picture comment. Breakout rooms are currently in private preview. They'll be rolling out in public preview, likely by early October 2020, and to everyone else, likely by the end of October 2020. If you don't have them currently, just be patient. If you want public preview access, you need to look into targeted release. If you don't know what that means, talk to your IT team. You can get them to set you up on it if you acknowledge that the tool may not work as expected, and you don't flood them with trouble tickets, and you say, pretty please. And while I was under the impression that if the organizer of the meeting has breakout rooms, even external people in the meeting can take part in them after testing, I've run into an issue where external participants cannot be assigned to breakout rooms. I'm told it's supposed to be uh, to support external people once it's available to everyone. For the time being, your mileage may vary. To create your rooms, for now, you'll have to be using the Teams desktop app, not mobile or web app, and you have to be the meeting organizer. Only the meeting organizer can create breakout rooms. That means literally only one person in the meeting is able to do this and must be present throughout the time you want to use breakout rooms for them to be used in a meeting. Click the breakout rooms button in the meeting toolbar. Note that the breakout rooms icon might be either of the two shown here. This one is the one I think they're going to use as a final version. Also, I've even seen examples where it's housed in the ellipsis menu in the meeting toolbar. Microsoft is still finalizing how it'll look and where it'll live apparently. Choose how many rooms you'd like, up to 50, and decide whether you'd like to have attendees randomly and evenly distributed among the breakout rooms, or if you'd like the rooms organized manually. Once created, the rooms should all say closed next to them. They're not available to join yet and won't be until you open them. Right now, breakout rooms can only be created in standard scheduled meetings and can't use them in channel meetings, though I think that's only a limitation during the private preview. You can only organize participants into the breakout rooms once the meeting has started. Also, for now, only the meeting organizer can create and open breakout rooms in a meeting. Presenters and attendees are unable to do that. That means if you organize the meeting, you must be present for the meeting to make use of the breakout rooms. By default, your breakout rooms will be named room one, room two, etc. You can rename these by clicking the ellipsis menu to the right of the room name to rename it. Renaming isn't critical, but it can add an element of fun, if not general organization to your process. For example, if you're holding a Model UN event, it wouldn't make much sense for Denmark and Bolivia and Australia to meet in rooms one, two, and three, right? Hell, you can even use emoji to label the rooms if you want. After you've created your breakout rooms, you can add more one at a time if you'd like. Click Add Room in the Breakout Room pane. After you've created your breakout rooms, you can delete them one at a time if necessary. Click the ellipsis menu next to a room to delete it. If participants have already been split up, the participants will be dropped in the main room waiting for reassignment. When you open up your breakout rooms, there are two ways participants join. They are either given the choice to join or they are forcefully sent to their breakout room. For corporate environments, being able to choose might make sense, but for classroom situations, you almost certainly want to make sure your students are automatically sent to the breakout room. To toggle this option, click the ellipsis in the breakout room pane and click settings, then check or uncheck assign people to your rooms manually as appropriate to your situation. If you've checked that box, 
Attendees will see a 10 second countdown when you open their room until they're automatically joined into their breakout room. If you've unchecked the box, attendees will be presented with a pop-up asking if they want to join. You can see whether they join from the breakout room pane. Once your breakout rooms are created and you're ready to split up your meeting into your rooms, click the Start Rooms button to open all your rooms at once, or you can open them one by one by clicking the Rooms Ellipsis menu and selecting Open Room to set up each individually. This disperses your participants into their assigned room. Once attendees join their breakout room, they have all the powers of a presenter in their breakout room. Notably, that means they can share their screen. In the event you need to swap people out between rooms, you have the power to do that. To move participants between rooms, expand the room name in the breakout room pane. Click the checkbox next to a name and click the assign button. Select the room you want to move them to. This is also how you assign people if you choose to set up your rooms manually. The meeting organizer can broadcast an announcement message via meeting chat to all breakout rooms so everyone in all rooms are informed of updates, changes, or news during the breakout sessions. To create an announcement, click the ellipsis in the breakout rooms pane and select make an announcement. In the pop-up box, write your announcement, then press send. This message is an important labeled message in the breakout room chat, so anyone in the breakout room can see it and respond to it, including at mentioning the organizer to get their attention if required. That said, the organizer has access to the chat for each breakout room via the chat icon in the team's app bar. They show up like meeting chats, so you don't necessarily need to join a room to take part in conversation. And if you want to send room-specific announcements, just use the room chat for that. The organizer cannot be in all breakout rooms at once. However, they can jump between breakout rooms as necessary. To enter a breakout room, click the room's ellipsis and select join room. There is no warning that you're entering the room. If privacy or a general right to know attitude exists in your organization, it makes sense to announce that you joined so everyone knows that you're there. Maybe a chat message warning your impending arrival makes sense as well. The meeting organizer can begin recording by jumping between each room. To record the breakout room, you need to be in it. In the meeting toolbar, click the ellipsis, then click record. There is no way currently to automatically set all breakout rooms to start recording automatically upon opening. At present, I'm seeing conflicting reports on whether attendees can record the breakout room. Upon testing, I as an attendee could not, though Microsoft documentation says breakout room attendees should have presenter status, which includes recording. Worst case scenario is the organizer needs to start recording when all breakout rooms open. Attendees can join from teams on desktop, mobile, or the web, at least once breakout rooms is generally available, so likely near the end of October 2020. If it does work for you and you continue to see the word preview in the breakout rooms pane, there's no guarantee it'll work tomorrow, so don't make this something you depend on. Always have a backup plan until that preview label is gone. While in a breakout room, meeting attendees are supposed to be given the presenter meeting role, meaning they're able to share their video, audio, screen, a whiteboard, and files, and they can record the breakout room. Note that the attendee role does not have most of these rights in the main meeting. Keep in mind what I said just before about recording your mileage may vary. And there were a few limitations for attendees you should be aware of. Notably, attendees can't add participants. Attendees won't see suggestions of people who should join, organizers may. Attendees can't get meeting details or dial out, akin to not being able to add participants. And attendees can't rejoin the original meeting themselves. Basically, attendees pretty much exist at the pleasure of the organizer, at least in version one of the breakout rooms. Once you close your breakout rooms, you can actually reopen them if you want. They will have the same artifacts, shared files, whiteboards, things like that as before, so the attendees can work on existing content, or you can delete the existing breakout rooms and create new ones for a fresh experience. Like regular meetings, you can download an attendance list and transcript. The recording will become available afterwards via Microsoft Stream as well. Only breakout room attendees and the organizer will have access to these because they're in the breakout room specific meeting chat, at least until the new meeting recap feature rolls out, which if you haven't heard about that is really cool. Check out my Ignite 2020 recap video above for some more really cool Teams features coming soon. Breakout rooms can be used by any logged in or anonymous person using the Teams desktop or mobile app at least once you're out of preview mode. Participants using a dial-in number or certain meeting room devices, don't ask me which ones, cannot join breakout rooms yet. In those situations, use the main meeting room as a breakout room for those people. This video covers version one 
of breakout rooms, which is rolling out in September and October 2020. After that, Microsoft is planning further features, none of which have expected due dates I'm aware of as of yet. Most importantly, I would think organizers will be able to share the ability to create and manage breakout rooms with other presenters. Organizers will be able to create breakout rooms and organize participants ahead of a meeting in a new breakout rooms tab in the new central meeting experience. While the organizer will see all the breakout rooms, an attendee will only see the breakout room they're assigned to. Organizers will be able to use Teams tags, those team-specific people groupings you can use to organize people independent of existing team or channel membership, to assign them to breakout rooms, which could save a lot of time. As an example, if you have a classroom team for physics lab and channels for each lab topic, tags for lab group one, lab group two, etc., let you organize people in a way that's independent of your team and channel setup. Those tags are what you'll be able to use soon enough. Presenters will be able to share files, whiteboards, and other artifacts from the breakout rooms in the main meeting. And lastly, a few other items mentioned include the ability to create breakout room templates so you don't have to recreate room setups each time you schedule a meeting, and breakout rooms in channel meetings and Meet Now meetings. So that's a brief overview of what you can do with breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams meetings. One important takeaway tip for you, test this thing out before you use it. Grab a friend or colleague or a few and try it out before you use it live during a meeting or class. You don't need a ton of people to test it out, but it's like any other thing in life. Without trying it first, you may be surprised how it does or doesn't work when you actually need it. So hopefully you found this useful. A friendly reminder for like the 10th time that breakout rooms are still in preview as of the time of publishing. Things might be a bit different in your system. In fact, if you notice differences, I'd love if you could comment below with what you see so others can keep their eyes peeled and be prepared for the impacts on them. So thanks so much for watching. And as always, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. Happy testing, playing, and making the most of breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams.